<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of One Take, brought to you by the TAB. Joined by two of the greats here that made the t- the big trip across the ditch. Willie Mason, the scope, Justin Horro. How's things, lads? Yeah, it's good, man. Early start yesterday. We're up at, what, 3 o'clock? Mm. 6 o'clock flight. Thank you, Lukey. Um, so it's up at 3, airport 4. So we are travelling all day yesterday. Uh, it was pretty good. We did the Half Cast podcast with uh, Tyson Pedro, which was good. Nice. Just had an inside of like UFC and man, that's a that's a brutal sport, man. Definitely. Uh, best day. Yeah, bit of a downtime this morning, chilled out. I was did a twenty k run, just chilled out. Mm. I did uh, kiddies, a work, for me, Jack. Yeah. I did a bit of a workout down at uh, Les Mills, a few coffees, but chilled out. So this is it. I told yeah, you, mate. Here. I told you, you boys would like Auckland. I've been saying it, Skip, for a while. Um, if you don't know, these boys are from the Levels Network podcast. So, um, yeah, they played a bit of footy and they were all right at it too. But, uh, Hozzy, talk to us a little bit about kind of what you guys got going on um, outside of beautiful Auckland, mate, when you're back in Sydney. What, what's going on? Yeah, so we're back over here. Um, so for people that, that don't know me, may do a review and preview show every week. Um, we also do – I do play golf with uh, all the different teams. So this is the Warriors episode. Mm. Uh, we're playing at Tiara Links yep. uh, on Sunday with that, Wade you, Egan. You there, right? no, it's I the Mickey. Heard, heard it's mad. It's, Very it's hard. Yeah. Very hard to get onto. So yes you know, no. Did SJ get you on there? Yes or no? I still got connects over here, JK. <laughs> they remember me from 97. I remember his dad. <laughs> yeah. The proper OG, we'll Mark Hortle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're looking forward to that. Um, mm. We had some guys from Unreal Hire uh, reach out to us. going to take us out on the boat, go fishing tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, we're catching winery, up with a few maybe people. winery. Yeah, I think depending weather- on depending on the weather. Yeah, we'll be yeah. out fishing if the weather's uh, all right. But if it's shit, we've got Plan B. Plan B sounds good. They got some right. private island or something. Yeah. You know, you chuck out private island. Private island. island. <laughs> you don't chuck we that can out hit, We can hit some, f- hit some golf balls, winery. Good food, That's good conversation. South, south of France, Willie. That That's one. what I'm thinking. I'm like, <laughs> and I said, to you guys, oh, it's a category two. It might be. A, I said. We can't swear, yeah. Yeah, of course you can. Um, yeah, yeah. If it's category two, he goes, you know, he might be able to take them. I said, fuck that. If it's more than just a little bit like that, plan A, plan B, for sure. <laughs> yeah, he loves a bottle sure. of Rose Amy, mate. Yeah, he oh, does. Yeah. Dangerous. So you boys, um, this is obviously the Warriors podcast. And you both have played against the Warriors. Um, I know I've spent two years talking to the Warriors, talking to you about the Warriors. But, yeah. Mace, we'll start with you, mate. As we walked in here and I was sort of walking you through, you said, fuck, I've, it's been a while since I've been here and I could see it in your eye. Mount Smart Stadium or Daniel Anderson Stadium today, but um, what are your memories of playing here, bro? Yeah, it's good, uh, great memories. You know, like uh, just brutal games, man. Really brutal games, but great memories, man. Like every time we come to New Zealand, like I knew because you know, it's just yeah. It doesn't matter if we're coming first or they're coming first or last or whatever it is. Bulldogs versus Warriors here in the early two thousands was different. You put your yeah your hard hat on, you know what I mean. Like uh, you know you're here for 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 business and a physical game, and you know it's going to go. It could go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Warriors, we don't know back then. The Warriors, you know what sort of Warriors were going to turn up. Yeah. The Ali Lauatiti Warriors, you know what I mean. The Jerry <laughs> Susu Warriors, um, the real brutal ones, you know Monty. what I mean. <laughs> Brut- the, the brutality with skill set. You know what I mean? Like never die sort of offloads and just Stacey Jones, Ruben Wiki, those sort of guys. Man, so I went through the whole evolution of how the Warriors play and we were, we were always battling, you know, like regardless of what team I had here. Um, Mount Smart Stadium, but like test football here I played, brutal. Um, but the Warriors games, man, they were crazy. You know what I mean? I've, seen, I've played some of the hardest games in my career here. So it's great memories, right? You know, it's regardless if you win, lose or draw, there was never a game when I walked off and went, damn. How do we? How am I doing this? You know what I mean. It's not like I was New Zealand's favourite son either. No, you weren't. So no, everybody, <laughs> everyone's coming after me. So it made me, but it made me play better, right? Mm. Especially being born in New Zealand, right? Mm. Everyone knew that, and then I chose to play for Australia. So people understand. Like my mum is half Samoan, and half Tongan. My dad was an Aussie, and so I was born here. I'm proud to be born in New Zealand, right? But it's not my decision. I was like, it's not like I was five years old and said, "I'm over this place. Let's go back to New Australia." <laughs> yeah, your parents make that decision, right? So, brought up in Australia. So every time I played against New Zealand, because they're like, "No, oh, you should be playing for New Zealand," but there was no real connection there other than I was born here. So every time I played against the Warriors, there's that Polynesian thing that gets real cultural, gets real tribal. You know, I'm trying to earn their respect and shit like that. So I had to go harder because they're trying to take my head off. Big time, the Monty Beethams and all that. You can see, we all laugh about it, yeah. but I was that dude that they had to go at. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I love that as well because I'm not going to let anyone put it over me. Therefore, it's fucking fireworks. But 
it was all fair. There was never any dirty play or anything yeah. like that. It was just play the game hard, fair, shake hands, chill out. You know what I mean? It was never any like real fights or anything like that. It was just like that real, that real Polynesian, like just going at it, real cultural, real tribal. And I love that. And then come together after the and game. And then come together yeah. after the game. And then, you know, coincide with the Sunny Bills, the Royal Satussis, mm-hmm. and like Matty Utah's really Tonga's Renny Matur's. Then it got real crazy because the first four years I was by myself. <laughs> I had Nigel. That's about yeah. it. Nigel's in the centres <laughs> playing with his mo. Nigel's here today. <laughs> <laughs> I know Nigel's here today. I rang him. He's the first boy I rang. But yeah, so they're the memories I have, man. So yeah. New Zealand always brought the best out of me because I was never ever going to be like coming off the field playing like hey, I didn't I didn't rip in. So there's not one New Zealand player that ever go, oh, yeah, Mace is a cat. Yeah. Never because like. I don't yeah, think there's too many here. players, period, to say that, Mace, yeah, but I like what you're going. Yeah, but like, it's just like you just really brought the best out in me because I was like, I had to mm. prove. And, and you see that with a lot of brothers that play in in Australia, Australian Australian comp and born in Australia playing for Australia. They come here, it, it's like you know you have to perform because yeah. this is like the mecca of it. You know, like you got all the brothers here, all the Samoan boys, Tongan boys, half of you know, born in New Zealand. So you've got that connection to New Zealand. Yeah. So you don't want to be that dude that turns up and like, you know, because, hey, you you'll up. get told. And oh. hey, and the public will tell you. <laughs> 100%. And Scope, you played a bit of code here as well. And your old man, actually an OG of the club, I think he's warrior number 31. So it must wow. be pretty special for you to walk through the gates as well. Yeah, super special. Um, And then for this day as well, Daniel Anderson gave me my mm. first ever jersey to play NRL at Parramatta. Yeah, so um, this stay and being back here means a lot. Um, when Dad played in 96, 97, so he's the second year, um, you know, I remember – you know, one of my earliest memories of footy is running Daddy out of the tunnel back oh, in the day mad. to the drums. So he used to put me in front of Steve Kearney, who ended up being a, becoming Oops. a coach of mine. Um, yeah, so at that time, I hated it. <laughs> yeah, As a kid, yeah. I was so nervous. Mm. They used to put me with the ball boys. We'd run out of the tunnel. We could hear the drums coming as you're walking through the tunnel. I think you used to warm up over on the second yeah, field as uh, well, yeah, the, yeah. the opposition oh, team. Oh, you would come through that yeah, actual yeah. tunnel. Yeah, that's what we looked up there, Oh, yeah. when we drove past. Yeah. I was wondering what you were talking about. That's what I was saying. I said, warm up on that. They used to warm up on number two and then come through the tunnel tunnels and they have the drums and you can hear all that and as I'm getting closer and the drums are getting louder, I'm just getting more and more nervous. And like Steve Kearney or Dennis Spets, who was the skipper at the time, <laughs> Dennis Betts, yeah. used to be pushing me because I'd be going like leaning back against them. I was only 10. Uh, and, and like I said, I didn't want to do it. But now I look back on it, I'm super proud. Yeah, um, it's always good to be back here. I haven't been back in a long time because I finished playing in 2015 NRL and then obviously went overseas. And then from that point, I haven't been back in New Zealand. So it's almost been 10 years. Yeah, wow. S- since I've been back in wow. Auckland, yeah. So special to be here. Thanks for having us. And um, yeah, that's good. Looking yeah. forward to tonight. Yeah, we're excited. Obviously, you boys do have corporate responsibilities. We're not going to take too long, but no, I want to bring it forward, mate. Good, this mate. current group. So you've obviously played in those, you know, we spoke about the Bulldogs used to bring games to Wellington mm. um, for years. And obviously, yeah, you play mate. plenty of footy here at the highest level. This current group, you've been watching from afar, watching the Warriors, and I'll throw to you as well, Skip. But like, what have you made of the current group this year? I know it's they've caught a few boys by surprise and yep. people in the media and yourselves, but what have you made of this current group? And is there any sort of similarity you see to some of those great warrior sides when you're out there reading those names yeah. off the wall? I think they've um, they found a balance finally. Mm. It's a balance, right? It's not too much of this, not too much of that. And I think it's with the coach. Coaches come from where? Penrith. Yeah. Very, very systematic and everybody needs to do their job, right? Um, they train hard. Obviously, they're fitter. Uh, Sean Johnson's having a career best year, but it looks like they've found a balance. Right, they're still offloading, they're still playing football, but it's just not that real crazy offload in their half where it's like that's not a it's a, it's a low percentage play. We've been through that, you know what I mean. <laughs> so these guys, the back five are running so hard, the fullbacks running so hard, like that that's part of the game right now. Yeah. Your back rolls are outstanding. The middle, Fanul Blake, Bunty Barnett, and to Torhu to Harris, middle, and yeah. Torhu Harris, right? He's the key to that side. Yeah. Wade Egan's having a career best year. So what's happening right now? And this is where, like, just because they weren't in the top eight last year, Warriors are all round having career best years. Sean Johnson's. He might win the Dally M. He should. Do you know what I mean? A Fanua Blake, top three, <laughs> top three front rower. Uh, Torhu Harris, top five lock. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Dallin, Dallin, I think mm. he's a top three winger. Uh, you know, so they're having these career best years coincides with winning, mm. right? But they're gritty now. They, you know, they're gone are the days where you can just like, yeah, we'll play some, we'll just hold them down for like 40, 50 minutes. They'll fatigue and they'll start passing out their ass and then we'll get on top of them. It's like, no, they're there for till the 75th, 80 minute. And like they'll blow teams off. Like they, if you don't stick with it, yeah. they'll go. So it's a totally different mentality. They work really hard in defense. 
um, which is a Penrith thing, right? All the movements, you know, like Ciro is one of our, is, is a coach for us. So Ciro and um, what's the head coach's name? Forget him. Webby. Webby. Yeah, I live yeah. with Webby in Hull KR. Yeah, it's awesome. So <laughs> good yeah, for six weeks, he knows me. He knows me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was the assistant. He was the assistant yeah. coach, Webby. Yeah. So when I was Hull KR in 2011, oh, so true, it was fucking crazy. Yeah. So I always, I'm, I'm proud of him because he's come through, the, he's, he's done his time. You know, he's yeah. done his apprenticeship. He was, he was, he was battling and he's got the, and no one was saying that Warriors are going to be like this this year. No. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's him. He's been at the uh, underneath Cleary and that whole brain shots out there with Ciro and everybody's got a real – it's like it's the it's the best system in the game, right? Mm. So he's brought, a, he's brought a little bit of Penrith to, to the Warriors. The Warriors have got football, right? They can just naturally play football and they've just got a really well-balanced side. So that's the difference. They're not then they're playing high uh, low percentage games, but they're playing hard, fast, smash mouth football with with a with a little bit of class on the end of it. Yeah. With with uh, SJ. Mm. Like we'll we'll get to SJ. But um Scope, you played you came through uh, two thousand nine, was it Skip from memory? Ten. Ten, Ten Parramatta rookie of the year. If yeah. I'm so Thanks, memory mate. serves me. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Um you obviously also came in when the Warriors were so we've had an amazing period when Willie was coming through. Yep. And then a bit of a flat patch, and then an amazing period when you came through. Obviously, 2011 yeah, we went yep. to the 10 to the finals, 11 to the GF. Were you from playing as the Warriors to now, what you're sort of observing them play like now? Are there any similarities between those eras, or are you kind of in the school of Mace where it's it's more kind of a new system and a new approach? Yeah, I think I noticed the um, the improvement straight away. Like I go back to that Tigers trial. Was it was it, yeah, here, it was here or was it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It was, they played the tri- Tigers straight away, and defensively, I seen the buy-in from them mm. straight away. Mm. It was really strong indications. Um, they're really um, tying in hard for each other. And I'm really big on body language, Jacko. You know that from our time together. <laughs> I could just see the boys getting around each other yep. and really celebrating, not necessarily scoring tries, but defending well for each other. The and I was things. like, ooh, there's, there's a little bit. This, that was the first trial. And I was like, oh, there's a little bit something here with the Warriors this year. Uh, and then the second thing is uh, there are some similarities with squads that have done really well here in the past, right? You go back. I always love a hard work and Aussie in the middle. Mm. Like it's, you know, you think back to the Kevin Campion, Steve Prices, yeah. um, Michael Lux of the world. Mm. You've got Mitchie Barnett through the middle now. He's, he, he's your guy. Yeah. Um, and then there's always going to be, you've got always got all the Warriors teams always had skill, power, um, speed, all the, all the things that make You can't coach that. Today. It's the other things that they've really lost that over the couple of years, you know what I mean? Like with the fitness levels, yep. mm. with the little one percenters that the Melbournes and Penrith do, right? It's like coming up, closing those gaps a little bit. Like it's all about connections, right? Mm. Coming up, there's no gaps when you come through the middle. Like where sometimes when you can fatigue the Warriors and like you get you get someone being lazy on the other side of the ruck, it ain't happening now. Mm. They're real, it's a real buy-in from the players, a real conscious buy-in as well. Where for Newell Blake, I think he's been, in the last five years, he's been a top five prop. But the reason we're Payne Haas and uh, the Fisher Harrises and Leotas and Tinos do it's defence mm. because sometimes he was taking plays off. He wasn't he wasn't tying in as much. He was just relying on his attack, right? Where where and then he could get get away of making two hundred and fifty meters, you know, playing big minutes because he wasn't really buying in to the defence sort of things. But if he doesn't buy in, which I mean, and he has bought in now, it could really like his footy could go down. But he's really bought into what Webby's doing, and now he's a top he's a top three prop. Easy, easy, because he's fixed those little bits in his game where things that like pe- people like me watch that. The the layman's would watch and go, oh, he's just two hundred seventy meters tackle breaks, yeah. all this sort of shit. I'm like, dude, miss six tackles. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I'm looking at, and coaches look at that because mm. we know what you're going to do in attack. I know he's going to f- the post contact meters, 80, 90 meters a game, two hundred something plus meters. Going to be involved in tackles, but it's like a couple of little play plays he has off. He's not having off anymore. Just on ads, did you cross over at Manly with ads at all? Nah, no, but he lived with my family growing up, oh, so yeah, cool. he's he's got a you know obviously a really checkered past too. He yeah. Was, uh, so at, when good. he was at Parramatta as so a kid, tell, tell a little bit about because when you say he lived with your parents, oh, so sorry. your dad looks after Manly yeah. boys or Penguin so boys or? so when Dad finished playing footy, <clears throat> pardon me, he comes straight into looking after uh, players at Parramatta in a in a house. So. For instance, it would be kids 16, 18 that were going to, you know, have have ambitions of playing first grade or the the club thought highly of, and they might have been in situations where they either lived in Queensland, New Zealand, or in Adam's sake, he only lived in Maddo, mm. was a little bit off the rails. So they want they they move him in with mum and dad. Um, it's like a brotherhood system. I think Mace sort of had a similar thing at the yeah, Bulldogs, yeah. and they clubs. come through. 
And it's just about good habits and, and trying to put him in a stable environment. And he was still a little bit rough around the edges, obviously. Like yeah. he went through his – he went to Dragons and then went to – somewhere I think he might, might have went to Manly after the yeah, Dragons. Really. But um, – yeah, look, I was, we're, we're talking about on the pod. He's just a, a great representation of the club now, um, his area. I know he's still super proud of his area. Um, he was one of mum and dad's favourites, like, over the years. Oh, he's uh, one of everyone's favourite dads, yeah. <laughs> Despite, you know, kid, like, yeah. being a bit of a rogue and, yeah. and getting into dramas, whenever he was in the house, he was always super respectful, mm. um, you know, always, you know, reaches out to mum and dad every now and again. I think dad seen him last week when he was in uh, Waikato for the game. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, he's a big part of why you're going well. I think um, this team reminds me a little bit more of the early 2000s than the 2010-11 yeah. team because just the way Shawnee's playing. And they really. can beat you different Shawnee's ways, more of man, like a can... Stacey from 2002 than he Shawnee is Shawnee from... of uh, yeah. 2011, yeah, that's, I reckon. Yeah, that's a scary, And then they've got the speed person. and power on the outside backs, like Dallin and Ma- Marcelo are playing like Henry Farfilli and, and Francis Melly with their kick the returns. Back, the yeah. back five the is ridiculous, yeah. right? It's, it's yeah. up there with Penrith, and I think that's what they really wanted to strengthen up with Webby coming from Penrith's system. Like, yeah. you need a good back five. They yeah. need to just be like – so because, like, it helps the big front rowers, right? Because you've got to, still got a big a big fall pack. So they kick it. You've got Chance coming back, and then you've got, like, Montoya, and you've got um, – Dallin. Dallin, and then even the big uh, Rocco Berry. And who's the other – Your boy that? Rocco Berry. You've been on Rocky t- Berry for a while. For, who's, 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 who's the other, who's the other, who's the other <laughs> center? The one. left center, Pompey. 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 Yeah. Pompey. Been on they Rocco run. <laughs> they run hard, man. Yeah. So if they get the first three plays on, yeah. they'll come. They'll they'll end up making like thirty meters. Mace, so you've, therefore, you've been interrupted here by um, Sorry, Sir Peter Leach. Butch. Oh, the, the butch. butch! The Butch is coming. How dare you? Come on, Butch! Here come on, Butch! Here he is. Royalty. Oh, Royalty. Okay. We'll take a quick break. Uh, no, yeah, no, the Butch is in building. Disappointed. You come Sorry, up brother. here oh. and you didn't ring me. I was going to ring you, mate. You I was going to pick you up at the Are airport. You? Butch, he's, <laughs> he's working, oh, Butch. Yeah, he's ran out of data. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I knew it running. Go back. I didn't want to interrupt. Well, you have. Yeah, yeah, now, Butch. You're the king around here. Legendary. Yeah. Sit in the middle. Yeah, get in the middle. I'll take it. Sit right in the middle, Butch. Go on, mate. Perfect. Don't need it. This, this is yeah. what it's all about. This is perfect. At Wales all right, HQ. Three, two, one. Yeah, good on you, Bush. There you go, mate. Beautiful stuff. Willie's a great man. He's he a is. nice boy, too. Yeah. Both, both good guys. But Willie done me a big favour recently. My grandson's a big fan of his podcast. And he said to me, Do you know him? I said, Of course I know Willie. <laughs> and so Willie sent him a nice message, but it was really nice. And he. Thanks, sir. Yeah, uh, no. Thank Call you, me Peter, you're a mate. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to let you boys get all right, we'll catch up. Thanks, thanks up, Butch. Catch appreciate up. it. All right. Oh, shit. All right, all right, all right. Leave that off the pod, eh? <laughs> I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Are we out tonight? <laughs> you mentioned some uh, big names there, and I feel like our <laughs> recruitment this year was really slept on, like mm. coming into the season, brought back guys like uh, Chans, and then you got Jackson Ford, some of these guys that perhaps weren't big names at their clubs, but they're playing Unreal Near Code court? now. Yeah, Marata there. Jesus. Like, how important is scary. that? If you're That's a top a four man. side, yes, one yeah. to 30, you need to be stacked, right? You need that depth in a physical competition like that. Yeah, this. you do. And you need, like, you know, you got Bunty of followers. You got you always look at the 21, 22, 3, 4, 5. And most of those guys could be playing first grade somewhere else. Mm. That shows depth in the Warriors, you know. And um, I look at the forward pack. It's well balanced. You know? Three or four hit-ups a game. Be happy with that because I know Adam's going to be doing 25 hit-ups, mm. 280 metres post-contact. I'm happy with that. So you need to swallow your ego a little bit. And just for the greater good of the team, like guys like Tony Grimaldi make 60 tackles, I'd make 20. But I'd do tw- I'd have twenty five hit ups and yeah. Sunny Wood and everything like. But it works. That's how it works. You can't have five ball ball hogs. You know what I mean? Like you need about two or three, and all the all the others just do their job, hold hold shape, and just like make the tackles and do your job. On Benny's point there, Skip, like a, a guy who came across, we were all excited about it, but I don't think anyone knew he was going to be this good as Dylan Walker. Mm. And it's a guy who I know you have a relationship with, and you've yep. been a big fan of walks for a while. <clears throat> Dylan's gone from a premiership winning centre as a kid. He was an Origin 5'8 utility, and now he's basically a middle forward for us. Um, what have you made of sort of Walks' year? And then um, I suppose just the man off the field because he's one of the greats. You, he, just like Walks, you recruited first graders. So yeah. the first and foremost, like you look at a Mitchie Barnett, 100, nearly 100 plus games. Uh, Murata was 100 games over here, I think, yep. about five or six yeah. weeks ago. Dill Walks, his resume speaks for itself. Uh, Chansey, um, you know, fell out of favor at Canberra, but he, he put together a pretty good career in Canberra there for a little bit. The, the two that surprised me the most are Jackson Ford and Metcalf. 
Yeah. Um, but on to Dill, experience, um, I think he was super underrated at Manly in, in his role that he developed. He went from a center there. He come over from – he was playing for Australia, bro. you got to yeah. remember, like, those early days in, in Souths, um, I had a chat to him recently. I, I can't remember when we were having a chat, but he was playing fullback for tests for Australia. Yeah, he mentioned that on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. And Shawnee, well, maybe that's where I seen it, bro. I was the watching. day of doom. Shawnee was putting yep. up torpies and he could get no. I seen it on your potty. That's where I seen yeah. it. Yeah, so. He tells the story. Sheensy comes up to him and says something along the lines of um, Carmichael, someone had done a carve at training. He goes, can you play fullback? And Walks goes, yeah. So I've, I've played fullback. Yeah. And then he goes, yeah, he says, Shawnee just put up the bomb squad. He said he dropped the first two. They scored off one. And he goes, it was a nightmare of an afternoon. He just kept bombing. Me Even having recruitment with Sean Johnson, right? Who's who yeah. was? You probably thought that he was going to be done. Mm. You know what I mean? Like his last sort of 18 months at um, – I knew, I knew he had one or two decent years at Cronulla. And everyone's like, mm, I don't think I don't think you can get it back. Mm. Comes back here. It's just like – He's a, he's a new person, right? Mm. Mentally, physically, everything like that. He's become a lot smarter. Like everyone was thinking the last couple of years, like at least at least be that sort of manager, right? Manage the game. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If the step's gone or any, anything like that, get your kick, get to your kicks, and 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 he wasn't doing that, mm. and his defense wasn't doing it. You know what I mean? So everyone's like, well, what, what can we do? Comes back here, the attack's back. Like you know, like his leadership is there. Like he's having fun again. Like it mustn't have been having fun at, at Cronulla or even at the back end here. And he had but so just about three years. He was just mm. like look unhappy the way he was playing. You need to be. You need SJ out there smiling, laughing around. That's the, the sort of SJ I'm seeing now. But something was happening, and then he's just gone. You know what? I can still, I, I can still like hit him with that right foot, left foot. I yeah. can still got put him on a on a dime. You know what I mean? Like still fucking throw balls, unreal. Still like going in there, squaring up and just playing these plays that he's making look so easy. And I think he's just matured as a player and he's just gone. He's taken his game to another level. Scope, have we, have we ever seen sort of a renaissance from a half like this before? Like no, I know never. People, people, Sorry, yeah, never. People, compare him, uh, people compare it to Benji because I know Benji did develop nah. as a game manager, but I don't know if I've seen anyone, I'm very biased, but I don't know if I've ever seen anyone do it this well from a guy who was such a – Phenom, Ferrari. man. He's it was a phenom, phenom bro. Into what, you know, you guys mentioned Dally M before. We're, I'm all aboard, yeah. But Benny's all in on the I'm Dally M. Um, I, was, I said that about yeah. four or five weeks. Well, what is, like, have you ever seen anything like this that you no, can kind of think no, back I'm, to? Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying spot, to think of it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. This For me, this is the best version of Shawnee that I've ever seen. But really? the thing is how you're saying, like, like because Shawnee fell off, yeah, that's the difference. Like everyone knew what he could do yeah. for like ten years, and then he fell off for three, and everyone thought he was done before my time, mate. But did Freddie kind of have a bit of an arc like that, or did Freddie? Fred, always- no, nah, Freddie was always solid. Nah, Freddie was always he was always, always, yeah, always, always very consistent. You know what yeah. I mean? But like as, as I said, like where SJ was ten years of dominance, yeah, and then the fall off was like everyone thought he was done. Mm. Then to this, so no one's done this. He come back and win Delhi M, no. and, yeah, and I probably can't think and of it. I'm trying to no one's doing. No one's doing. I could honestly say no one has done that. Not no one because <clears> no one's fallen off that bad yeah. for that talent. Right? Everyone can has, can be a decent player and they fall off a little bit, and everyone's like, yeah, well, you weren't that good to start start with, right? That's what I, what I think. I'm like, yeah, he was a good player, but he's like, he wasn't yeah. that. He wasn't the dude. Sean Johnson is that dude. He he was that dude, and he fell off so bad. Everyone's like, that's that's what you're more disappointed about the fall off. And it's like, can you get back? I'll He's back. My little mate Fozzie had a little bit of a research. I, was, I didn't want to say that. Were you, you knew, leading me to Fozzie? I knew you thought I was maybe taking the piss. But <laughs> I think, yeah, oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to understand, like, yeah. fit Foran was, was not SJ. No, he never, never had that. Pick, I mean, I'm yeah. saying it's he was never because like go, you're talking a golden, you're talking right. a former golden boot winner. Yeah, like you know what I mean. You're talking a top three talent. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So no one is doing, no one's done what Sean Johnson's doing right now. But those like, years for Fozzie at fucking Bulldogs and uh, and, even here. and even here were really tough, man. But they were really oh, shit really teams. Tough. Yeah, so shit. Yeah, we well, can argue <laughs> the, easy. The, the, yeah, the, easy. No, <laughs> come on, no, 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 we're being consistent. They were awful, no, we're consistent. bro. Yeah. The dogs were awful. The Warriors were awful. <laughs> yeah. Now he's coming. You know, like yeah. Shawnee yeah. Johnson went to Cronulla. They were still on the rebuild sort of thing, and then he's come back home. It's just the perfect. Was, story he, was he at uh, Cronulla for three? Because he, he had two. I felt like he had two. Two years. One decent year. One decent year. And then he did his Achilles right in the second year. That first year at Cronulla, he had his season. Oh, career high. He was good. Try assist. I was going to say he was silky. He just topped it now. Twenty three. Over, okay, and it was twenty back then, but, but yeah, he was trying. But yeah. then there were some games Benny's when he was playing fence. for Cronulla where he'd he have yeah. he'd have zero <laughs> runs for zero meters. It sounds right. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to you want a Sean Johnson who at least has a crack five or six times a game. Yeah, you know he was going through there and he was just getting through games. He was playing in a dinner suit. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was like now he's making his tackles. Shawnee, he's getting through. Shawnee won't mind us saying this. There was even a moment, the very first round of this year. 
where I think it was against the Knights round one, he had a moment early in the game when um, Lachlan Fitzgibbon or someone went through through him kind of, I don't want to say soft because I don't fucking play, but it was a play that Shawnee now would yeah, not let happen. In front. And when it happened, there was kind of this collective fuck kind of around the organization, like what Shawnee went get, and he – you know, had a private conversations with of himself and his coaches, and mm. mate. Since then, I'd, I'd argue he's one of the better defensive halves. Oh, he's in the ninety percent. Get, getting about he's, he's been unreal yeah. defensively yeah, because they spot him up because yeah. they because usually as a yeah. big guy you're going at Sean Johnson mm. simply because he's not the strongest defender, mm. and you want to tire him out. You want to give him like thirty five yeah. of the best. So in a ta- and proper knees and elbows at his chest yeah. and trying to really like not injure him on purpose, but that's how the back rolls want to do that. Take the juice out of just to try and yeah. say so. With, so when he has to like really step up that like attack, it's like he's bugging like yeah. especially in the yeah. seventy minutes. So that's the whole plan for teams, man, to get at him. But he hasn't. Yeah. He's been making his tackles. Just yeah. one more before we oh, move off. Um, you know, I love me anytime, Jam Jacko. I know you do, mate. Like the Bulldogs game, I had mm. kicks lining up on him, mm. and that's when I noticed straight away. I went, "Fuck, this is a different Sean Johnson." Yeah, you defensively watch it in that game, because yeah, I'm, I want kicks to score, right? <laughs> and Shawnee keeps chopping him or jamming him. Yeah. I was like, "Fuck, this is the best version and it's, and of, of Shawnee I've seen right? in a while." Yeah, for sure. Because what happens when your seven is putting his body in front of big guys as like like the kick outs yeah. and all that kind of stuff? Every middle will not miss a tackle. I think you see, and him because he holds, because he's well, held steam out of his. Yeah, well, he's well, that's what I was going to say. Like when we were talking to him on here, he re- he puts it down to Marata being on his inside. Like yeah. everyone defender. knows that he's a hard hitter and a good defender. So how much does that help? Like having a second row, you yeah. can yeah. trust. Who's been, yeah. his, who's been his right four for the last four years? Yeah, you know what I mean. They're, that's the hardest mm-hmm. position to tackle on the in it's hard, hardest position to defend in the game because mm-hmm. you got to count numbers. All your middle plays, you need good middles. You need a good five man, yeah. and you just that four man is so important because he's counting numbers everywhere, right? And mm. Sean Johnson needs to trust him. Mm. And then you're right. And then you've got Rocco Berry and then you've got uh, Dallin. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. So that's true. a pretty good right four. Mm. But Mer- uh, N- Neokora yeah. is a fucking dog. Com- combinations and repetitions, hard. people underestimate that. Mm. Like continually turning people away with that combination with – with your crew and then training together, feeling good, watching right. video, then putting it out on the training paddock and then again putting it on the field. You, it's so underrated when you, you do, do that, that continually like you with, like with, a, with someone. Yeah, because like, you break your game down into little bits. Like you got your left four, you got your middles, you got your right four. Everyone competes not to let tries in. Yeah. That's what it is. You know what I mean? So the right four will be like, because everyone loves going right to left, right? So it never really attacks, they never really attack the left side. So the right side's always under the pump. And now, like, because it, it builds confidence and you've got that camaraderie and you've got the continuity with that right four because they've kept it all year, apart from Nikora Nikor getting injured or suspended, suspended yeah. a few times, something yeah. like that. So he's missed three games, but he's played mm. 21 games, right? Mm. And so, like, Sean Johnson trusts him, trusts Rocco Berry, trusts Dallin. You know, but you trust your middles as well because Fanua Blake and Wade Egan and Barnett and Torhu Harris working their asses off. You know what I mean? So and that's what happens. Gets Mitchie, right? So if Murata's out, it might be Mitchie that yeah. plays there. Josh Curran, who's, who's there, super yeah. rock solid as well. Yeah, yeah Josh Curran's a good defender. So like, you know, oh, he can barely he can yeah. Mudders Curran can barely get into the seventeen. That's how good your seventeen. Yeah, defender was jumping yeah. Curran, but he's good. Yeah, we love Josh. boys, we got to get you out here because I know you do got corporate responsibilities, but. This podcast comes out Monday, but I still wanted to talk about the fact that you are here today. Um, Scope, you well, you both play for Manly. Daniel Anderson round, old boys round. Just talk a little bit about the occasion, and um, well, we're excited to have the Levels Network here. But it was just mad. to be here. Yeah. Thanks for being. Thanks for having us too. No, of course, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I always love the Warriors. Always got a soft soft spot for the Warriors, but being old boys day, right? Yeah. That's about you, mate. I went to battle with these dudes, man. I'm a Nigel Bungan is going to be here, Ruben Wiki, all these guys that I've, I've, you know, you're talking 20, 25 year relationships, right? Monty's excited. You're talking age. Yeah, but you're talking ages. So, like, we've all, we've all bled on the field and we've all went to battle, like, whether whether it be test football or or just club football. And, like, just see these guys now and we're all retired and happy and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, down the, uh, Daniel Anderson being here and like yeah. obviously that's a uh, real sensitive stuff, real sensitive moment for for the Warriors and the players and you know and, and himself. So mm-hmm. like yeah, I pre- appreciate you guys having us and and New Zealand having us. So we're gonna you know we'll um we'll have a good time. Yeah, you're about to. You guys are going to be in the TAB lounge with Benny as well. So go easy on me, mate. When you're up yeah. there, all right. I'll and give you um, some yeah, that's what I need. Bro. Are you guys going to record you guys on Monday? When are you Monday? recording? Yeah, we'll your do podcast? the review on Monday straight away. I think we're just going to do it from at home. But I've got one request. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be – there's game days, right? There's NRL game days that put on good spectacles. You tell me anyone who does a Friday night game better than the Warriors after you yeah, experience I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Being on the other between, side now. now I'm between yeah, the yeah, run, yeah, out, yeah. run out to halftime 
everything that involves just I want to see the run out where they just they got mate you wait for half time because I'm sitting out because you know what I'm <laughs> sick, sick sick of sitting out there for like three or four minutes while they're fucking round in there <laughs> fires and shit like that I'm like <laughs> hurry up and get out of here <laughs> no, just get this, I'm like, get this shit started mate, yeah. we're sitting, I'm cold man now you can appreciate it here yeah I'm cold now, they know that we're sitting out there about three or four minutes it's a long time man they're doing it on purpose I'm like yeah <laughs> hurry up <laughs> our boys got tech it's the old, the old manly hosing the opposition yeah, shit that's our version turn the lights off and let them shiver yeah bro I love it I love it um, boys, I absolutely love you. Thank you guys so much for coming on, man. We appreciate really appreciate it. Man. it. Thank um, you. This is One Take brought to you by the TAB. If you are going to have a punt, do it with the TAB. Do it responsibly. Benny, Hoz, Willie, thank you, boys. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Up the was. Up the was. Say it, Willie. We need to get Willie to <laughs> say it. Warriors. That's my goal for the night, man. <laughs>